a guy. He's got to ride his bike to show off to everybody. I do nothing but work out. I can't even take a minute away from it. He's doing a triathlon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that would be nice to do a triathlon. I would drown. I, I would drown first in the water, <laughs> then I would right. drag myself on the bike. Okay, I can do that. And because my running is really poor, I'd kind of limp through that. You'll be yeah. Limping. Good luck with that. Okay, so we're gonna do. We're gonna interview Phil Heath while you're working out. No, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Kind of oh, okay. Off. Let me. Let me. Uh, here, I'll pull out my dumbbells. <laughs> <laughs> do some curls. So I'll be on the bike and I'll be doing curls, presses. You know, That's six all minutes. with about thirty pounds. pounds there muscle. you go. So, <laughs> oh, what? Hey, Josh, what can you bench? Well, about thirty pounds. Have, what do you think of that? Thirty's <laughs> a good start. No problem. I We're heard talk- about you, Tom. You, you used to bench three hundred. Yeah, I could think I probably still could, but I, like I said, the world record now is eleven fifty. So I don't think I could bench eleven fifty. I'm almost <laughs> almost certain I couldn't. Super Dave could. Look no. at Super Dave. Look no. at the no. physique no. on Super Dave. Here it is, a fifty-five-year-old man. At all. Dave's too tall to be a, a bench press guy. Arms the shorter your long. the shorter your arms are, the better you are at the bench press. Oh God, yes, that yep. is true. Welcome to the family with <laughs> Officer Dave, Josh Arnold, Mister Money Talk, and Andy Brent Bernard. There you have it. I'm showing off. I'm on my bike while everyone else sitting uh, on their ass. I, I can see. I can see it already. <laughs> here it comes. Okay. Here. Here we got. I've got my nice little office set up here, so I can track all my stocks. My favorite company got blitzed yesterday. Is blitzed a good thing? No. This was not a not <laughs> a good thing. Is that this good was thing? not a good thing. Not coming from the Department of Justice, filing a suit against oh, favorite yeah. Apple, mm-hmm. saying that Apple is a monopolist. Their iPhone controls the marketplace. They control yep. the marketplace for, for ready for this performance smartphones. Yeah, what is that, Andy? Do you know what a performance smartphone even is? Uh, I mean, I would imagine it's a smartphone with specs okay. of a certain, uh, okay. certain amount. Okay, you don't, you don't know. You've never heard of it. No, no I've one's never ever. heard of it. Yeah. Every, uh, every analyst that I've ever talked to about uh, smartphones has never heard of performance smartphones. Smartphone. Uh, this sounds like a made-up term. Uh, now, Apple does have a 20% share of the worldwide smartphone market. Depending on who you talk to, Apple has between a 58 and 60% market share in the United States of smartphones. I have never heard of performance smartphones in my entire career. And from what I remember, when Apple came out with their iPhone in 2007, it was laughed at by all those people who carried around the, what may be considered the original smartphone, Blackberry. the Blackberry. Yep, I had one. Yeah, yep. And if you didn't have a Blackberry, you were not only not in and not cool, you were behind the times. You had to have that BlackBerry, and you constantly had to head, have your head down in that BlackBerry typing away. Mm-hmm. BlackBerry poo-pooed, poo-pooed Apple's iPhone. Steve Ballmer of Microsoft. Ugh. They'll be lucky to sell 5 million units of that I- iPhone. Nope. Piece of crap. It didn't, uh, couldn't do anything. It was only a music player with a phone and a camera. Piece of, piece of garbage. No buttons. Who's going to buy one? 
Okay, so that's 2007. 17 years later, the Justice Department says Apple has obliterated the competition. They control prices. They have a walled garden. Won't let anybody into their ecosystem. They need to be uh, taught a lesson and forced to open up their garden, and allow everybody in uh, because that's only fair. Apple is a stifling competition. As a matter of fact, this, this morning on an interview on CNBC, the, uh, one of the assistant attorney generals, Jonathan Cantor, was interviewed and said Apple should welcome the competition that brings this suit, that brought about this suit. Apple should welcome the competition. What do you mean welcome the competition? Apple has been competing in this market, marketplace, for 17 years. They came, I'm not going to say they came up with this idea of the device, the smartphone that people carry, carry around, and now bury their heads in that rather than bury their heads in a BlackBerry. Uh, mm -hmm. BlackBerry is I'm not going to say a thing of the past, but pretty much a thing of the past. <laughs> uh, and when Apple, Apple's competitors, oh, let's see. There's Google with their Pixel phone. Microsoft tried to have a phone, but didn't work. There's Samsung. Now they have a phone, and if you would actually look at the Samsung phone and the Google uh, Pixel phone, they look very, very, very similar <laughs> to the iPhone. Why is that? Well, when the iPhone came out, actually before the iPhone came out, Eric Schmidt was sitting on Apple's board of directors. And one of the original manufacturers for Apple was Samsung. How do you like that? Uh, plenty of competition out there. Uh, with the Justice Department saying that consumers have been harmed by Apple because they pay too much for Apple's devices and may pay too much for the apps on, the, on there. And Apple makes it difficult to send messages from an iPhone to an Android phone and won't allow, allow you, if you're even an Android phone, to download all the emojis that Apple has. And that should be eliminated and if I'm on an Android phone, I should be able to send messages to an Apple phone and vice versa. And one of the sites in this suit is a conversation between a customer talking to Tim Cook, where the customer said, geez, I'm having trouble sending certain videos to my mother. Ooh. And Tim Cook's response was, buy her an iPhone. Oh, now that's really indicative of Apple, uh, Apple's dominance, the CEO telling a customer, buy your mother an iPhone. My goodness. Oh, oh Apple is, Apple's CEO is promoting his product. Yep, the suit, yep, hurts Consumers and competitors of Apple. Apple hurts competitors. Huh. Let's see. Maybe we should change something with the uh, Vikings because the Vikings have not been hurting competitors. <laughs> no, they have not. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. What can we, what can we do? I was, I'm thinking of Pete Rosell, but that's... Uh, I have to bring him back from from the great beyond. But <laughs> hey, Pete, uh, the Vikings uh, can't compete 
with the Packers, what can we do? You got to do something. Oh, that's it, Pete. File suit against the Packers. They're so bad. Yeah, here, here it is. Let's, let's think of another way. Oh, here it is. We want Apple to open up its its store to allow competitors in. Yep, I'm going to go to one of my favorite restaurants. Let's just say Jimmy's. You yes. guys have been let's to Jimmy's, say, let's right? Let's say Jimmy's. I love Jimmy's. We love Jimmy's. Okay, and I'm going to walk into Jimmy's with some steaks, some lobster. I'm going to walk right back to the kitchen move the chef, the cooks out of the way, fire, you know, put my steaks right on the grill, put the lobster on the grill. I'm going to come back out to my table with those things and start selling them to all the patrons that are in Jimmy's, undercutting the Jimmy's prices. I'm going to keep the money and then sit there and smile. And Jimmy's is going to going to say, or Mike Jennings is going to come up to me and say, "Hey, Josh, you used the kitchen, you used, and you sold your food in my restaurant. Don't you think you owe me a little bit of money?" So, yeah, there there it is. Okay, so. Competitors want to use Apple's platform without having to pay for it. That is amazing. So no different than me going into the restaurant and selling food to their patrons <laughs> and say, I don't have to pay for that. <laughs> Sorry. That. Yeah. Yeah. Mike would love that. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I know. I know what Mike would do to me. Well, no, I shouldn't, shouldn't say that. He's, he's smaller than I am. So I'd be accused of picking on him. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Um, um, you know, this, this Justice Department suit is, is worse than a fishing expedition. No, I understand that. No question about it. Now, I have to ask you a question. Do you, okay. every Friday, you, you get off the bike, you change clothes, and because you worked your ass off, you go out and have a huge lunch? Is that what you do? No. I have a, have a small lunch. <laughs> Or smaller lunch, but I do that this uh, every day, seven days a week. For how long? Well, the bike the bike could be an hour to two hours. Whoa! And that's either after I've run very slowly, you know, for half hour, 40, 45 minutes. Um, but I've got a great great setup here. So I can talk to talk to you or talk to other clients, catch up on any research. It's the, and then after lunch in the office for another uh, seven hours. So all you do is give, give, give. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't give, give, give. I, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a good guy. I just happen to have a great lifestyle. <clears throat> I love that when people say, you know what? I'm a good guy. <laughs> you're telling you're telling everyone that you're a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, I've so, heard uh, about how good a guy you are. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I've I've heard heard that. I've heard that stories. Sometimes. I've heard stories that you're so, you are a good guy. You know, you only you only uh, you only give fifteen uh, percent of your income to to various charities. Yep. Yeah, hey, you're you're a good guy. You're much better than most of the politicians, <laughs> that's for sure. Who barely give, who barely give uh, half of one percent of of their income to charity, but they all tell you, "Yep, you're not paying your fair share." Well, but that's another story. It. Please don't, uh, please don't get me started on that one. I will not. I promise. There's no question about it. You know, I got to ask you guys a question, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, so it doesn't look like Phil's going to make it today, Andy. Uh, no, he was canceled, but not taken off the schedule. Oh, well, who would have done that? I don't know. It's not important. 
Well, it's kind of important because I've been waiting for Phil to jump on. So, you know. But in any case, that's it all works out. Because like I said, I have to leave at, uh, at 10, uh, 1030 today because I'm talking to an advertiser. So, you know, trying to bring in dough to some, you know, you know what I mean? It's all I ever do. Well, sure. that's what you should be doing. That's what you should be doing. That's what I'm doing. Talking to advertisers. Talking to to clients, building your business, keeping exactly people it. employed. Yep, that's exactly what we're doing. So I got to ask you a question, and this is you know for a couple of different generations here. You got Andy, you got Officer Dave, you got Josh, and me. I don't think I've ever seen a period, and this has been bothering me quite a bit. I don't think I've ever seen a period where people are so incredibly obnoxious. And I believe it was social media that started it all. There's no question about it. Did you see that the phone calls that young woman made to, I don't remember who she even called. It was a senator or a congressperson or something like that. I don't know who the hell it was. Did you hear the what she called and threatened to kill them if they removed TikTok from American culture? No. That you, is... you didn't hear about that? <clears throat> no. I am not exaggerating. She goes, yeah, this is me. I'm calling you. And her friends are laughing in the background. She sounds like she's probably about 16 years old, something like that. I just want you to know this is me calling. And her friends are like, ah, ha, 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 ha. And I want you to know something, that if you remove TikTok from me, I'm going to come and kill you. And her friends, start, this is to a, a United States senator or a Congress, some kind of congressperson. They start laughing in the background, and then she starts laughing. Yeah, I am. I'm going to kill you, and she's laughing about it. How, how did we get to this point? Explain this to me, would you please? Well, hold, for, first off, uh, given that she, she made a phone call, even with a cell phone, yeah, that, and she threatened a U.S. congressperson, yep. that, would, that would be, a, I'm guessing, a federal crime. Mm-hmm. And that would uh, that could could have some of the federal uh, officers knocking at her door. Uh, because yeah, I, exactly. I mean, Dave. Uh, if if I were to call Officer Dave and threaten him, uh, I think there'd be some people would local tell you, no, uh, would. people knocking on my door pretty quickly. I would imagine. I imagine. So. Would you? Would you? Would you say that, uh, Super Dave? Uh, you're not. Uh, that's not a justifiable threat coming from you, Josh. Let's just. Put oh, <laughs> that's nice. There it is. Attacking, there it is. attacking <laughs> the little guy. Personal attacking attacks. the little guy. <laughs> so backing that up. Now, this I believe happened on the same day. If it didn't, it was a, a one or two days apart, but I think it happened on the same day. So she calls and threatens to kill a United States Senate member, or House Senate, whatever it was, I don't remember. And then we got another creep that used to work at NBC sending out all these notices that, oh, Baron Trump is now 18 years old. So oh, yeah. He, how could you, what is wrong with you? This kid is 18 years old. He's the son of a former president. Why would you want to put him in jeopardy by saying something like he's fair game now? Yep. What the hell does that even mean? Do you get it? Well, I think to me, it sounds like he's just going to uh, go after him, not necessarily physically, but anything he says or does is now subject to scrutiny. Well, then Kristen Burt told me this morning that she thinks it's Mike, was it Kinman or Mike Kenton or something? I don't remember his name. It was Mike something. But she said, the guy's a Trump supporter. I have a hard time believing that. That he'd be, well, maybe he is. I don't know. People are that nuts now. People have lost their minds. They think they can do or say whatever they want, which is not true. You're going to get your ass handed to you. But I just cannot believe all the threatening that's going on. What is this all up? What is this now? We removed the con the consequences. Yeah, we did. No one is held accountable for anything anymore. God. It's so it's. Well, it's what would happen, though, if, if in, in all seriousness, you know, you get this threat, if, if that uh, con congressperson or senator were to say, okay, please track this phone call. Yes. I guarantee uh, and show are. up. They are and, tracking it. Yep. And if she is a minor, 
all of a sudden, hey, you're not only a minor, you're saying this. We've got all your friends, so they are accessories. Yes. Either after the fact or part of the fact. And, oh, um, we're your parents. We're going to put your parents because they're responsible for you. Yes. We're going to put your parents on trial. I love it. That's a that, great call. Love that, that's, that starts uh, – Stopping that kind of behavior real quick. Yep. Andy, did you um, track down that guy's name? It's it's Mike Kington or Kinsman? Sington. Sington. His name is Mike Sington. And did you get any info? Because I saw you kind of checking it out. Did you get any information on this guy? Um, he apparently was a former NBC executive. Mm -hmm. NBC Universal executive. I'm trying to find out exactly what his title was. He was an entertainment executive, apparently, according okay. to his LinkedIn. Whatever that means. Does it does it go in depth about who, I mean, I have a hard time believing he's a Trump supporter if he's going to say it about Trump's own kid. There is right. absolutely no way this man is a Trump supporter. I wouldn't think so. But Kristen Burt thought he was, I'll tell you that. Hmm. But I just, I, I, I don't remember a time, and I'm including 1967, 68 after MLK, well, started with JFK, of course, and MLK, and went on and on and on, people being shot in public. And I have not seen the United States this vile since 1967, 68. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hideous what's going on right now. What is causing that psychologically? A loss of hope? Uh, no, Panda is I, most. Of it. Yeah, I don't see any lot loss of hope. I think it's just with a, with a lot of, we'll say, social media, and even non-social media, um, uh, cable cable television, mm -hmm. in order to get ratings, people started yelling at one another. Yeah, now I've yeah. got to got to think of that one TV show. It was so outrageous um, with a guy. I think he was a former mayor of Cincinnati. Jerry Springer. There you go. Yeah, Jerry Springer. And I'm not going to point and say, well, that was the start of outrageous behavior. But his show got plenty of ratings um, publicizing outrageous mm -hmm. behavior. Yeah, it's true. Uh, now, that may not have been the start of that, but then if I start looking at a lot of the cable news shows uh, where, uh, and that does, and it did not matter whether it came from Fox or MSNBC, somebody told the uh, newscasters, be as outrageous as possible. Yeah, I think you're right. And instead of having conversations, you had screaming matches back and forth. I mean, it was not, I mean, it was not Mike Wallace no. coming up no. with some very <laughs> uh, difficult questions for people to answer. And I couldn't even say it was Bill O'Reilly who followed on with that yeah uh or even i gotta think of this one guy who is no longer on msnbc but he was oh don lennon he was no Different not guy. don don lennon this is this goes back back before that oh okay. i think he was a he could have been a f former congressman and it was not morning joe uh but very uh, hold on. Is Chris? Oh, Chris Matthews. Oh, Chris Matthews. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I would equate him with uh, Bill O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. okay, they they had a lot of facts behind them, and they would go on. Okay, you may agree or disagree with them, but at least there was some facts, and then it started to be be coming up you guys are not bringing in the ratings go on the attack mode yeah yep that's exactly what happens too and then that was attack mode and then you you know i can go on 
on with that. I mean, it's not, uh, um, I mean, it is not the guy that, that you dominated on the airwaves, uh, Tom, who came from New York and left Minneapolis pretty quickly. Uh, Mr. Stern. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, and even he's toned down his, his act. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yep. But again, outrage, outrageous, uh, comments on the radio, but that to me was entertainment. What's going on now is not right. Entertainment at all. It's, uh, it's nauseating, um, and a lot of it is is has no basis in fact. Uh, only basis in emotion, or we could call made up facts. And for that, uh, I I can't say. I've got a little blame on our educational system, but I can put it a lot to some of the the stupid things that have showed up, we'll say, on TikTok. Not that I'm yeah, yep. Okay. Not that I'm in favor of a ban on TikTok. I am I am not. But and I, I do know that there is a lot of concern that uh, the Chinese government is providing a lot of influence uh, to what shows, you know, to shows up on, on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But if I'm the Chinese. Well, uh -oh. he just ran into a tree on his stationary <laughs> bike. He said Chinese and he got disconnected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. He said the word Chinese and all of a sudden he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that riding your bike, he, he might have unplugged something. I don't. I'm not really certain what happened, but he'll be I, back. I assume he'll. Yeah, there he's back. Nothing. Now. Yeah, there. Nothing. Nothing to worry about with, um, with, uh, with, um, with America, because of the idiocy that that shows up. Um, idiocy that shows up on on TikTok. A bunch of fat. Fat old men dancing in bikinis. <laughs> really? That's what's on there? Well, my kids have shown me that, that stuff. God. And it's like, here it is. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm going to do a TikTok video. I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to dress up the dogs in funny, funny clothes... And we're going to parade them around and send this out over TikTok. Uh, I'm going to come out with some outrageous stunt. And it's going to be on TikTok. So that to me is what, what is on there. There. Now, over the last weekend, uh, while I was out in L.A., uh, my significant others and that's what i should call her now so that's my so. so yeah significant other there you go significant other uh son who is a writer and director uh and he is we'll say he's yeah he's 40 years old you know he he is all for a ban on TikTok. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. He said, junk, junk, and more junk. And the Chinese government can stuck, stuck th stick things on there to uh, subtly influence what people right. are, are thinking. Okay. <sighs> then uh, the SO's older sister you know, chimed in that she was someplace and she was talking to another individual who was in his 30s who was very upset that TikTok could be banned. 
Why? Well, I get all my news from TikTok. Well, that's good. And I'm thinking, well, how old was this guy? 35. Thinking, yep. I've got a 40-year-old that, that, that says, this is bad. A 35-year-old says, oh, I don't, I don't look at any news other than what comes on TikTok. Is your wife shaving the dog or what? <laughs> no, it's they're vacuuming our house. Oh, us, of okay. Course, yeah. They have to do it during the show. You hear this? Oh, so I'm like, mm. I was like, okay, could you go do that somewhere else? Someone's crazy. getting the haircut. <laughs> well, I have to leave in five minutes anyway, thank God, so I can lower my microphone a bit. But I, I just, see, I agree with all the things. Uh, is it true that most of the people of the 170 million people that are on TikTok in America, most of them are under the age of 25, I've heard. Is that true? Let's see. That, do, that does not sound, that does not sound credible. That, that, sounds, that sounds like, uh, excuse me, that sounds like uh, casually figures coming from Hamas. Uh, two yep, thirds of TikTok users are 25 to, or one third is 25 to 34. Another third is 18 to 24. We don't even know how many are below 18 because they can't be counted. Yeah. So below the age of 25 is at least 40%. Yeah. So very hey, young audience. It's a very young audience. Oh, <laughs> okay. Now <laughs> it's a place to get news. I don't, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's it really is it's just instagram for young people because it, they're the same thing and everyone who's you know had a phone for a long time is using instagram so the only people who are using tiktok are people who just got their phones aka children Ooh. Yeah, that's bad news i don't i don't think my my granddaughters use tiktok but they might be, but because they're on Apple phones, there might be a way that their parents can cut them off. Oh, really? Okay. From that, yeah, there are parental controls on on cell phones. Oh yeah, um, Ethan actually he has a tablet which he uses to watch uh, super simple songs, and that's mm -hmm. about it. But there are very robust systems in place where they can't download any app. Um, you can block anything. You can block block the browser, block the texting block the phone any app you don't want them to be able to open you can block it um and you have to authorize all installations of apps so you can turn a tablet or a phone into just like this one app device that doesn't do anything at all if you want to so and i think every parent should be doing that honestly oh, to an extent yeah. i mean yep. maybe not lock it down like that but you should absolutely be locking down you know as someone who I first got on the internet when I was like 11 or 12. And back then the internet was just like, you know, it was the wild west. There was Took barely forever. any laws, ba barely any rules. No one even knew what was going on. And it was definitely like a kid that age should not have free reign access to the, to the internet. Right. Boy, it's well, getting louder. Coming right up to the door. Are they coming right up to the door? No, not quite. I keep... I've I've seen him walk by like seven eight times. But well, I'll, I'll I'll just turn my because I got to go in about three minutes anyway. But I just want to you know, I wanted to hang as long as I could, and I will point out that maybe uh, in the future we won't we won't vacuum. Oh, they stopped. Good, perfect. <laughs> yeah, let's not be vacuuming in that room when Uncle Tommy is on the show. What do you say? <laughs> right. Right on. All right, so I got to go in like two minutes. So any any, and as soon as I'm gone, I know you guys are gonna go after me and stab me right in the back. That I know is just a given. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad he's gone finally. <laughs> well, you know, you you guys, I was I was looking forward to hear hearing about this uh, Phil uh, last name. Why who, no? Yeah, who can't canceled out? Who's a former Mister Olympiad? Oh, he didn't cancel. We had to cancel on him. Basically, someone booked him for Friday, and we were like, Fridays aren't good, and so we unbooked him. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it'd be best not to have a guest on Friday. That, yeah, that true. that's basically what we said. I mean, Mr. Guest, Josh Arnold, I mean, that's a whole different 
So, Whoa, forty and well, well, I, I realize I'm not. I'm not a regular. I'm not part of the of the in crowd that you guys have. Uh huh. I, I realize that you know I'm a a short, skinny, older guy who still is working. Still working. Nothing wrong with that. Still All working. Right. No plans on retiring. Until they put me in the box. I understand. I'm going to run something by you that I ran by the uh, morning show this morning. So okay. If you, heard, if you heard it, you can't vote. But they brought up Goldberg. Remember the wrestler? Big, muscular Goldberg, the wrestler? Do you remember him? I do not, but I remember the name. Okay, Goldberg was a gigantically very muscular guy and all the rest of it. Goldberg has a cousin who lives in Minnesota. And you all know him. Who is Goldberg's cousin in Minnesota? You can you know the guy. I know the guy. Mm-hmm. I have to abstain from voting. Mike okay. Gelfand. You are correct. How really? did you know that? Yes. I just named Mike. the first Jew that came to mind. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, here you, he comes how many could that's a chip off Minnesota. the old block a chip Andy off the old block Bernard, yeah, right. that's it just like his dad <laughs> well, i also thought it would be funny because gel fan being related to a professor professional wrestler is just you know yeah you sometimes the apple does fa- fall very far from the tree you couldn't yeah. get two more physically no. opposite oh, people could in not. the world <laughs> my gosh gel gel fan i mean he is he is short. I'm not going to say squat, but wiry. He's definitely not squat. No, but he, he is. He is just a, a short guy. I'm not even sure. I love it. You know, Tom, Tom how how you and he get a, get along? I mean, he is. I mean, he is. He is more progressive. Yes, we'll say yeah. then, uh, then AOC. See, I can close with this then. This is the proof that I am as even keel as they get. There are two guys that are very good friends of mine. I think the world of both of them. One is Mike Gelfand, and the other one is Mike Lindell, and they couldn't be any further apart no, politically. <laughs> But I like I love them both. They're great guys. I don't give a rat's ass about anybody. Look, Mike Gelfan and Mike Lindell cannot pick the next president by themselves. So why would I get upset by their politics, right? <laughs> Calm down, that... everybody, with this political BS. It's getting old, right? Yep. All right, you guys carry on. I will try to do my best. All I do is just move forward and try to bring in more advertising, you know, just so we can all ride a bike. <laughs> That's it. I like that. Bring All in right. the advertising. Bring in the advertising. You advertise for me. I like it. My, I appreciate I that. I do too. Believe me. All right. You three carry on. I got to jump, but I will talk to you all next week. Yep. Hasta right. luego. Look, look, looking forward to it. Thanks. Bye. All right. Okay. I'm going to ask, ask you guys, because I do not know whether you are uh Apple iPhone users or Android users having like a, a Samsung phone or a Pixel phone. Um, do you think that Apple is a monopolist? I think, I think oh, Apple is, but I think Google also is. I think they all are at this point. They all, well, we were actually talking about this in the chat. So do you remember years ago, uh, Microsoft, I don't know if they ever actually got found guilty of it, but they, um, someone went after them for their Internet Explorer. Uh, yes, that was that was called the uh, U.S. government. Yeah, yeah, the government went the, after the, Microsoft the, the, because Internet Explorer was bundled with Windows, and they said this is monopolistic. You know, you basically have to give people the choice um, of using IE or not. Um, but now, I mean... Okay, so having something pre-installed on Windows was monopolistic. But now you buy any phone, Android or Apple, it doesn't matter. There's loads of stuff that's on there, and you can't even remove it. So why isn't that monopolistic, but what Microsoft did back then was? Well, I do remember that the suit, and I never thought that Microsoft had a, had a monopoly. Because you could... 
uh, change uh, that that browser if you wanted. Well, yeah, you absolutely could, and I don't think it was a monopoly either. But they did now, get found liable, right? They yeah, they had they had to unbundle. They had to unbundle the uh, the uh, Internet Explorer from yep. from Windows, and the suit the suit really uh, was also brought by. Uh oh, we lost Josh again. <laughs> and he's gone again. And Crashed into initiated, the I'll say initiated by a company that you guys might not have heard of called Sun Microsystems. Oh, definitely. Uh, and yeah. Scott McNeely. Scott McNeely could not compete uh, with uh, Mike Microsoft because Microsoft was starting to get into the enterprise. And Scott McNeely was a pretty good sized contributor, as were others, uh, to the fortunes of a president, last name of Clinton, because the Clinton Justice Department uh, brought, brought this suit, and it was in March of 2000, and to me that uh, suit, it came at the end of March of 2000, uh, seemed to be the top of the um, the dot com era era, and after that, stocks started to uh, sell off. Uh, on on that news, there was a few other things happening that March as well, uh, where uh, the Clinton administration started talking that all new technology should be shared freely. As in free. That sounds kind of communistic or socialistic, doesn't it? Mm. Free, yes. So all of the innovation that came into companies at that point in time, you know, uh, oh, why are we spending all this money? Now, there were a few other things that caused the market to sell off uh, over a period of time including that we were coming up to it, an election in 2000, which uh, once it was decided, it became undecided as the Democratic uh, uh, candidate, uh, Mr. Mr. Gore, said that, nope, he didn't lose. Uh, he actually won and he won a recount in three counties in Florida. Yep. Uh, and that went all the way to the Supreme Court before it was decided, yep, George Bush was the winner. That was the hanging Chads thing, yep. right? That, that was the hanging Chads thing. Mm -hmm. So when people people start saying, oh, you know, uh, you know, Trump is protesting the election. It was stolen, et cetera. Um, sorry, guys, uh, you had the, the same the same claim. Uh, but in any case, after, after that, the market started moving up again in 2001. And then unfortunately, uh, we had nine 11, uh, 2001, which changed everything. Yes, it did. Um, now the suit in my estimation that the justice department was filing against Apple, um, uh, is nothing, uh, to me, is nothing comparable um, because there are a lot more alternatives available in, in the smartphone world. You know, even if you say, well, Apple's got 58% of the U.S. market, they only have 20% of the worldwide market. So that's, that's a lot. And people... Um, consumers decide whether or not they want an iPhone or blend it with an iWatch because uh, that's another part of the suit. Geez, if I have a Fitbit, I can't download that information onto my iPhone. Okay. Uh that's that's your choice to have the the Fitbit as opposed to to an iWatch. Uh, so I'm paying up to have an iWatch. 
because I like the um, all the features that my iWatch has that do do go with my uh, iPhone. But that's my my choice. Uh, Apple didn't force me uh, to do that. If I got a Samsung smartwatch, it's not going to pair with my iPhone either. And by the same token, if I had have a have my uh, Apple Watch and I had a Samsung phone, that wouldn't uh, work either. So I don't see the government going after Samsung on creating uh, interoperability with that. I mean, well, if you're going to be talking about all these companies being interoperable, you got to go after all of them. That to me it creates the, the, if you want that, that kind of level playing field, you don't go just after, after the one guy. So this is kind of sounds like a witch hunt then, Josh, is what I'm, I'm hearing you say. Well, I'm not going to say it's a witch hunt, but. Uh, or they want a piece of the, they want a piece of the action. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're, they're just like the, the European Union going after. Uh, or creating a law, the Digital Marketing Act, that goes after Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Meta, and ByteDance, which owns TikTok, that they are platforms, and those platforms need to open up to anybody um, and not discriminate against any of the the content and allow in the case of we'll say apple or their iphone uh allow a company like uh we'll say spotify to go to use apple's platform to promote their service but uh, go around apple to collect uh fees without having to pay apple a fee for using their platform and having access to Apple's X number of European customers or uh, Apple's 2.2 billion worldwide customers. And that to me says, well, that, that may, that's not only not fair, it makes no sense. If you're using you know, a platform Let's say, I mean, the simple thing is, if I wanted to put my product uh, or if I wanted to sell bikes in Walmart, uh, I've got to pay Walmart a fee uh, to do that. Uh, if I want to sell mustard in Walmart, I've got to have pay, I've got to pay a fee to get the shelf space. So it, to me, it's no, no different. These companies should pay a fee. Uh, now the question becomes, well, should it be Apple or Apple's 30% fee, which they collect only when you get a paid app? The free apps, they don't collect any money. Mm -hmm. uh, and Google, nobody talks about Google. Uh, Google charges 30% fee. And... You know, Microsoft, Microsoft has an issue with Apple's iPhone because they want to promote their games on the iPhone. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you want to promote your games and have your games available on the iPhone, but uh, games that are designed for the iPhone can't be downloaded onto, uh, you know, the Windows platform without doing a lot of uh, changes. So where's the, where's the Justice Department on, on working with that? Yep, it's everywhere. Somebody just uh, wants a piece of the apple pie. Mm. Like. Yeah, well, and, and I will say in, uh, there's a case with Fortnite. I'm, I don't play that game. Maybe, maybe you guys play that game, but the game... No. Uh, sponsor or developer Epic Games has had a ongoing uh, 
uh, issue with Apple over over their fees. But hey, you Epic signed a contract with Apple. You read the contract. And the contract specified when you uh, or somebody buys something on the Apple's platform, you have to pay Apple uh, 30 cents out of every dollar. You sign the contract. That's it. If you don't like the contract, renegotiate it. Uh, but don't go ask the government uh, to... Um, to say Apple's a monopolist, you, Epic Games, or you, Spotify, you sign the contract with Apple. You want a better contract? Go negotiate with them. Don't do it through, you know, some big, uh, big corporation, or not corporation, big government, and have the government do the work for you. And in uh, one case in the United States with Epic Games, uh, the federal judge said Apple is not a monopolist. So I think the end result of this is the DOJ, you know, has got everything under the sun into this suit. It's going to take many years uh, to litigate, uh, if at all. Uh, Apple could already... By the time this even goes to trial, Apple could change a lot of their um, at, change their app store or change what they're doing. Uh, and I think the end result, you know, could uh, not be in the Justice Department uh, favor. And it's just another another thing, at least in my mind, that what are they what are they doing? And do they know anything about how business works? Okay, you know, you say, well, Apple or Google have uh, uh, a monopoly. And I say, nah, nope, Google doesn't have a monopoly because there are many uh, search services out there. And yes, Google pays companies like Apple a significant fee uh, to be their default search engine. But uh, guess what? Google, Google is a verb. Yes, uh, it is. You guys might use, use Google. Why do you use Google as opposed to Yahoo or Microsoft's Bing or DuckDuck or any of the others uh, or Ask Jeeves <laughs> or AOL? You know, as you know, to do your to do your search. You know, well, that's why I use Google because all the others are horrible. OK, so Google's you getting a, worse by the day, but it's still the best one. OK, so you made a choice to use Google. I actually tried very hard to use anything but Google for a very long time because I do think Google is monopolistic. Okay, uh, And I think that they're very shady in a lot of ways. They have too much power. But the fact is that if you want to get anything done with a search engine, you basically have to use Google, except for some very basic things. Okay. Well, I've never, I've never liked Google. I like, I've always liked Yahoo. It's got more stuff on the uh, face page that is of interest to me. That's uh, the key right there, the interest to you, because it's like, that stuff, all that stuff on the face page, I couldn't give two craps about. Yeah, I like it's just a, a text thing, and you hit enter, and that's it. Yep. That's what Google is. Yep. And that's what it's been since the very beginning. And they, I'm feeling lucky button, which is stupid and no one uses. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, you're, you're making the choice to use it. Uh, yeah. I bought an iPhone. That was my, my choice to buy, the, to, to buy the iPhone and continue to buy... Um, you know, the headphones, uh, the, the watch, I've got two watches. I'm looking to get a third, third watch. I think that's, they're tremendous products. I like what Apple's innovation does. And I like some of the, we'll call it privacy features. Uh, plus it's easy. It's easy to use. 
Um, you know, I've got clients, even though they have large positions in Apple uh, stock, that like Samsung phones or a Pixel phone, because initially they got a deal on it, and you know, through the whether it's uh, Verizon or AT and T or T Mobile. Me, I just like going to the to the Apple store because it's a great experience, a much better experience than when I used to go to Verizon to pick out, uh, you know, a an old uh, cell phone. So I like that experience factor. People are very helpful and super knowledgeable. Yeah, my my wife does the Samsung thing, and she did it specifically because she wanted to be able to pair her calendar and whatnot with the Microsoft part of of the Android. Me, I like the simple stuff. I'll take the I'll take the simple iPhone any day of the week. Mm. Oh, you have different uh, phones. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Most families, they all go one or the other. Yep. No, she picked she picked the Android because of specifically because of being able to use Microsoft and and sync it with her work stuff. And me, it's like, no, this is this is way too easy. My my son did the iPhone first, and he, I asked him questions about it. He's like, it's the easiest one on the market. So see, I had know. an iPhone for a while, and then I switched over to Android. Uh, iPhones are just so, they're so expensive. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like even the I don't do they even have a cheap model anymore? No. no. Yeah, now it's just like the standard price for every iPhone Over is a thousand dollars. Exactly. Well, you, it, you can get set something cheaper. You you buy the used uh, ones. previous year's model. So right right now they're on the fifteen, so it's cheaper to get a fourteen. There's still some thirteens around. I and, remember twelve. Yeah, and when I was in LA, I saw a billboard. Uh, for one of the cell phone carriers, come in ninety nine dollars for an iPhone twelve Max. Okay, well, that's still plenty of you know plenty of choice with what you're what you're going to to get. Yep. But you're making you're making the the choice with that. Um, you know, end result. Uh, I think the, in terms of a stock, uh, I think the stock price is going to be under pressure. Uh, long term, I still have my $250 price target on Apple. It's just going to take a lot longer with this, what I'll call it, legal overhang on. But Apple's still going to innovate. Uh, they're still going to provide, and this will be very interesting in June, when they talk about uh, artificial intelligence and how that's going to work with uh, phones, whether they develop uh, their own or, you know, the, the deal that they're working on with Google, that other monopoly, because um, Google does pay Apple a significant amount of money uh, to be the default search engine. And the questions come up, well, why doesn't Apple develop their own search engine? Well, didn't Apple's they do Safari? Yeah, but it's the Safari's default. The oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, Apple got, doesn't uh, have a search engine, I don't believe. No, but they, they use Google. They yeah. say, we use the best. That's the best. Why do we have to spend money when something's already out there, well-received, it's the best, don't have to repeat the process. So if Apple uses... Uh, Google's Gemini AI. Well, I don't know whether Apple's going to be paying or that's going to be part of the deal they have with Google so that the Gemini AI initially will be the default uh, artificial intelligence that goes on the next iPhones. So that's going to be interesting. That comes up in, in June. But... We'll have to have to wait and see. I'm not running away uh, from from Apple, but this suit, a um, lot of headline, 
lot of noise, but I don't think it's going to amount uh, to too much. There. Well, <laughs> good way to end her, Josh. Good, good way, way to, to end, end the, show. the show. Okay. We are. Well, you guys are tremendous. Thank you very much. Careful riding your bike in the snow out yeah, there. Don't ride, Don't run into any trees. No. Nope. No, that's what. That's why. The bike is on a stand mm -hmm. in the basement. Right? In the basement. Um, well, I hope you have a radon mitigation system. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> we do. pretty heavily there. Yeah, we, we've got all kinds of things here. Well, there you go. There you go. All right. So we will talk to you Monday, after which it will apparently have snowed 100 feet. <laughs> okay. So uh, depending on if this, you know, every uh, every winter we get, it's the next winter apocalypse. It's the next blizzard of 91. Yeah. And if it's true, we may or may not see you on Monday, but I doubt it. Yeah. Well, I've got a, here, here it is. It's basketball tournament time. Isn't during is isn't uh, the facts lead that basketball tournament time in Minnesota is snow time? That's, That's what the they high say. school, high school tournaments. There's always a big to do about that. Uh, is that well? There's always an early snow and a late snow, yeah. and this is the late snow. Yep, and they're talking rain again next week, so it isn't going to stop. Oh well, yeah. Long, so. As soon as that rain hits that snow, it's gone. Yep. All right. Well, we'll see you on Monday, and. Uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy See you, Josh. Snow. Take it easy. You too. Thanks, Super Dave. Thanks, Andy. Bye. Bye. Talking about you.